So a 56-year-old man presents to clinic with uh, hyperuricemia and the inability to explain quantitative PCR efficiently. So it looks like I'm going to have to do a little extra credit. So what we have to remember for quantitative PCR is that we're going to double the number of target molecules in every cycle. So if I start off with one copy of a, of a target molecule in a sample, after I've done one cycle, I'm going to have two copies. After I've done the next cycle, I'm going to have 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. So after I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cycles, I've got 32 times more copies. Let's just suppose instead that I started off with 8 copies. If I start off with 8 copies in my sample, after one cycle I'm going to get 16, and after two cycles I'm going to get 32. So this took me five cycles to get up to 32. This only took me two cycles to get up to 32. So the difference between them is three cycles, and I'm doubling each time. So I've got doubling each time, three cycles, is eightfold different. So I had eight times different, eight, eight times more copies in the second experiment because it took three, three fewer cycles to get to the same place. So here's what that looks like if I actually chart it out with real numbers. I'm going to start off with different numbers of templates uh, and then watch these guys accumulate when I double that number each time. So here I'm starting off with 0.8 copies, whatever that means, uh, and then 1, and I want to just show you the difference between those two, and I have a 20% difference in the template molecule number. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to double each time. So uh, it's a little bit hard to look at this because uh, everything's squeezed over to the right because nothing's happening. We're, we're getting too few DNA molecules for me to actually detect them uh, during the beginning cycles. So let me just chop that off, and we'll concentrate over on the right-hand side of this. Okay, so these are the same data. Uh, and let's just imagine that we can't detect uh, our products until we get 200 million copies, so right over here. So we're not going to be able to see it until we get to this level of product number. Now if I started with 32 copies of my template in my original sample, uh, then that's going to show up at that uh, 200 million copy number threshold somewhere here between cycle number 23 and 24. And since the next one is 16, which is exactly half of that, it's going to be exactly one cycle later. So if it's 32 copies, I'll pick it up in the 23 and a half cycles. If it's 16 copies in the original sample, I'm going to pick it up exactly one cycle later. So fewer copies means it takes me longer to amplify until I get to the threshold of detection. And it's going to be exactly one cycle because I made everything exactly half as much half as much of that, exactly one cycle later, between 25 and 26, and so on. Uh, so if I, it's going to take me one cycle longer to detect half as many mo molecules. I just put this last one in here, the, the 1 and the 0.8, whatever 0.8 copies of a molecule means, uh, because I wanted to show that you actually can discriminate these guys. They're going to be less than a cycle apart. Uh, but I can measure how many cycles later that is, uh, and then I can determine uh, that I had a 20% fewer copy numbers uh, in that first sample than I have in the sample with just one template molecule in it. So quantitative PCR allows me to detect very small numbers of molecules, extremely sensitive, and it's also quantitative. Uh, all I have to do is remember that fewer copies means more cycles before I detect it, and I'm doubling the number of products in every uh, cycle that I do.